Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Amen. We thank God for being here today. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. And I tell you, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed to see my bishop, our bishop. He belongs to the vessel. He belongs to us. Amen. Amen. And our first lady, I told her this morning, I said, this is the fastest I've run in a long time when I saw her coming through the door. I'm just happy to see her. So we should, I'm telling you, this is a day of jubilee, a day of rejoicing. I thank God for my brother and sister who are here, always faithful to come out, amen, and just to support. I'm not going to have you standing long because there is a word from the Lord. There is a word, amen. And, and you are here to receive that word, amen. What an awesome God we serve. And so we're going to go right to the bread of life. And I'm going to ask that you would turn to 2 Kings, chapter number. We're going to begin in chapter number 6. We're going to read three chapters, chapter number 6. And then we're going to go down to chapter number 7 and read three additional verses. So we're going to expedite it because I don't want you standing very long, but there's a word in here for us on today, a rich word, a word that will strengthen us, that will help us, and that will encourage us. Amen. Second Kings chapter number six, beginning with verse 31 through 33, and then we'll skip quickly down to chapter number seven. And it begins, then he said, God do so and more also to me, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. But Elijah sat in his house, and the elders sat with him. And the king sent a man from before him, but ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, See ye how this son of a murderer has sent to take away my head? Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door, and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him. Now you're going to understand all this in just a moment. And while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him, and he said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for the Lord, or why? should I wait for the Lord any longer? Chapter number seven, verse number one. Then Elijah said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Last verse, number three. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit ye we here until we die? And the message for this morning is just, there's a breakthrough in Samaria. But I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them this. It's on its way. It's getting ready. Listen, I'm a little excited this morning, but I'm going to slow down. It's getting ready to happen. There is a breakthrough in Samaria. And it's getting ready to happen. Now you can tell your neighbor that while you take your seat. Just tell him it's getting ready to happen. Now this day is a day of great um, um, excitement. Today is a day of great celebration. Pastor Barron started it off by telling us uh, we didn't come here for uh, uh, just out of emotion and we didn't just come here out of rote but we came here, we, we made it up in our minds. We, we decided to come to the house of God for a purpose and for a reason, we decided to come into the house of the Lord, no matter what it is 
or what it is that you're going through that you put it in your mind to get up put your put get dressed and put your best clothes on and and wash your face and get yourself started and get ready to come to the house of the lord you wasn't going to the corner grocery store and you wasn't going uh, uh, around to the corner to meet a friend but you was coming to the house of the lord and that means something because when you come into the house of god god always has something ready and prepared for you you're not coming in here i'm telling you, you might come in here a little empty-handed but by the time you leave you're going to be full you're going to be walking around with your bellies full you're going to be walking around with your head full and your hands full because that's just the way that our god operates now I want to get into this story. I was so excited about being able to preach the word of the Lord. And, and Bishop called me and said, well, you know, we're going to have to put it off a little bit. And I said, that's all right. It's well with me, whatever you want me to do. And I was still getting myself ready, getting prepared. And then I got another phone call from my beloved and dear Bishop. And I said, Bishop, whatever you say. It, it's well with me. It goes well. But now that I've got my opportunity and my chance, I'm going to have to slow myself down because I'm excited in my spirit for what God is about to do for the chosen vessel. For what God is about. I'm telling you, it's hanging in the atmosphere. It's hanging in the atmosphere. And you do well to hang out at the vessel. You do well to keep doing what you've been doing here at the vessel. You do well to stay on your post. Somebody said, I'm on my post. I got to be here. I got to be set and ready because God is getting ready to do an awesome thing. Now listen, this story here in the Bible in 2 Kings talks about a king named Jehoru. This particular king is king over Israel. And this particular king was the son of Jezebel and Ahab. And some time had transpired, but here it is in the place called Samaria. And there was another man in the place of Samaria called Elisha. Now the king, we can look and see uh, his background, we can look and tell his history. He came out of uh, 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 a family that was treacherous. And he came out of a family that didn't believe uh, in, the, in the word of the Lord. And he came out of a family that did all kinds of things uh, that worked against the will of God. And they had to pay for that. And, and, and the land was filled with apostasy. And the land was filled with idolatry. The land was filled with rebellion and the land was filled with false prophets and false prophecies and, and people that just didn't adhere to the will of the Lord. He came out of that kind of a history where his father was weak and his mother was treacherous. He came out of that kind of history where his mother would do anything to get ahead. She was greedy and, and she was ambitious and, and she would do anything to, to have things turned in her favor. And, and she ruled the land. Ahab was over the land, but actually Jezebel ruled the land because she had all these false prophets. And, and then God raised up Elijah to deal with the matter. God always has a man in place to deal with sin. God always has a man in place that will hear the word of God. Listen, there is so much going on in the atmosphere and in this place that God is dealing with, that God is working through, that God is saying, listen, I want my people to stay steadfast and unmovable. I want my people to stay focused. I know we've been going through some stuff. When our bishop goes through, we go through. When our first lady goes through, we go through. When they're burdened we're burdened when they're hurting we're hurting when they are uh, when the enemy is after them he's after us so we have to stay together and we have to stay connected together but listen in this situation the enemy we could see how the enemy against Samaria came and surrounded the city the Bible says that the Syrians came and besieged Samaria not the whole land but they picked on Samaria my God in heaven they picked on Samaria 
Thank you, Jesus. You know, sometimes you may feel like I'm just going to do this thing. Sometimes you may feel like you're being picked on and pointed out and, and people tugging at you and people pointing their fingers at you and looking at you and laughing at you because you decided to live a holy and righteous life because you decided to do things the way God wants you to do them because you start, you decided in your mind and in your heart that you were going to adhere to the will of God for God I'll live and for God I'll die and you find yourself being a target for the enemy that's what Samaria was because here Elijah his seat was in Samaria can I can y'all see the correlation here this is a place and I'm just gonna tell it like it is like God put it down in my spirit this place is holy this place is righteous this place is privileged this place is full of benefits this place has been blessed by God we have been so overwhelmingly blessed because we have a man of God we have a woman of God to lead us who believes in the righteousness of God who believes in good judgment who believes in doing people right who believes in the law of God and here because of that because the anointing is in this place the devil has mocked us and the devil has marked us and the devil has tried to take us out by trying to take away our head but we can stand up and say for sure right now not so it ain't happening here Jack it ain't gonna happen in this place you won't take away our head you won't take away what God is now listen y'all can sit there because y'all know I get excited when I begin to talk about the word of the Lord because it's in me like fire shut up in my bones hallelujah God is doing something for this place God is doing something for the chosen vessel we might be in a land called Samaria but it ain't gonna always be like this there is a breakthrough coming for Samaria thank you Jesus even though the enemy seems like he has surrounded this place even though the enemy seems like he's got locked in even though it seems like the enemy has got his hands on us but the devil is a liar hallelujah anytime holiness holiness will always take precedent holiness will always rule out that which is unholy that which is unrighteous and the enemy will have the gall enough the enemy will have the audacity enough to try to raise his head up against the people of God and try to lock us in and try, listen it hasn't been an easy thing they've had to this, this sermon today is about us this sermon today is about our bishop and first lady we're in this thing together somebody just said that pastor Hatcher said we're in this thing together listen this is about us encouraging one another this is about us building up one another this is about us standing together with one another ain't no time for falling out now ain't no time for going into a different place now going into a different room ain't no place from going across the street and down yonder somewhere it's time for us to stay together build up one another because our bishop is on his way back my God in heaven he's on his way and listen he's going to come back greater his brother said it last week he's going to come back greater than what he was when he left out of here thank you Jesus our blessing and breakthrough is coming for Samaria and we got to get ready for it here it was in this story, there's so much in here that I want to try to share with you. But in this story, the king had to deal with the situation that was going on in his city. Had to deal with looking at his people starving to death. Having not enough food to eat. Having not enough food to feed their children. Having not enough. Listen, when they locked in Samaria, they locked out everybody else. When the armies came in and besieged Samaria, they wouldn't allow even others to come in and to feed them. It wouldn't allow others to come in and, and do merchandising with them. Wouldn't allow them to, to, to cooperate and, 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 and to uh, have uh, exchange of goods. 
everything was locked out of Samaria and Samaria was locked in and all their resources began to deplete their food and and everything that they the grain and trying to till the land and fruit and everything that they had and needed to feed their children was being uh, uh, dissipated and nothing was coming in because they were locked in by the enemy and can you only imagine in your mind going through something like this day after day and week after week many of us have gone through trials and troubles and tribulations and testings that week after week and day after day and when you think you've had enough here comes some more when you think you were through with that test here comes another one and when you thought you were over that here comes something else when you thought you had your you in your right mind to deal and handle this situation here comes five more and it was wearing you out and wearing you down you began to cry out unto the Lord and say how much longer Lord how long do I have to suffer how long do I have to take this how long do I have to go through this kind of treachery how long do I have to go through this kind of uh, disappointment and frustration there's nothing listen when you're shut in and when you're shut out uh, you have no place to go but to God you have no place to move but to the face of God you have no place to go but to band yourself together with your neighbor and with your sister and with your brother and say let's pray you might have a piece of cornbread and I have a few beans we'll get together and share what we got but we got to handle this thing right we got to do it right and we got to stand up and begin to cry out and call on the name of the Lord ain't nobody coming to help us Mabo Shanda, no outside help, no outside forces, but we got a man of God here that knows how to get a hold of God, that knows how to cry out on our behalf, that knows how to get a word from the Lord, and we won't quit, as Pastor Hatcher says, we won't get up, give up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We won't quit, and we won't get an attitude, as Pastor Rainbow said. We're gonna watch. We're gonna watch it. We're going to check our attitude. Here it is, the man of God. There was one straw that broke the camel's back when he heard a woman cry out to him and said, will you give me a judgment? Listen, I, this woman told me that if, she, if we eat my child today, we could eat hers tomorrow. What kind of horror is that? What kind of atrocity is that? What kind of unspeakable act is that? And in his mind, he's trying to wrap his head around that. And this woman wanted him to give her justice because this other woman reneged on her own child. And he couldn't take it anymore. How many of us in here has come to our last straw? How many of us in here just took a feather to fall? Hallelujah. And we lost it. How many of us in here got that one last phone call and said, this is it. I'm out of here. I quit this whole stuff. How many of us said, I've been waiting on the Lord and all I've gotten was bad news. All I've gotten was negative news. How many of us said, I can't handle it anymore. I can't take this anymore. And Jehu threw up his hands and, and rent his clothes. I know I'm going fast. I'm trying to get it all out. It's so much, so much here. The privileges and the blessings that God has in store for us but look we're going through some stuff we're trying to handle it we're trying and sometimes we get to a place where we grab a little bit over here and grab a little word over there and come to Bible class maybe twice a month and maybe we might make it to Undabo Shanda y'all know I'm telling the truth maybe make it to Sunday school to hear a few teachers put out the word of the Lord and even since our bishop has not been here the press has even been harder because I want to hear my bishop want to see his face want to hear a word from the Lord but you press your way through anyway but we have to do something about our attitude we got to check it at the door we got to understand that this is only like somebody said a temporary situation we are being tested and we are being tried for our faithfulness how faithful are you when you don't see Bishop's face how faithful are you when you don't see Lady R sitting in place how faithful are you do you turn around in the parking lot and say oh give it another week and if it doesn't come back by then I don't know how faithful this taste is unto the Lord it's not unto us but it's unto the Lord God said how faithful will you be to me how faithful will you be to the house of God how faithful will you be to my love
love. How faithful you be to my grace. How faithful are you to my goodness. How faithful will you stir yourselves up. Thank you Jesus. And keep coming. Till that not only will you keep coming. But will you keep giving. Will you keep giving my Moshanda. Will you just keep giving to the house of the Lord. It's easy for us to put our hands together and stomp our foot. But when we get down in the purse. Where it takes a sacrifice unto the Lord. We say well I'll just wait till next week. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I'll just wait till next week. If Bishop shows up then I'll pay my tithes. If Bishop shows up then I'll give an offering. I'm telling the truth. I'm trying to encourage you. Trying to bless you. Trying to lift you. God wants to bless us. God wants to give us a blessing. That's a crazy blessing. Blessing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Trying to stir up the people. Stir up our minds. Thank you, Jesus. And this king said that was the last straw. He said all these problems, all these troubles that have come unto us is because of that Elisha. Because of the man of God. He's done this and I'm going to take his head. How often can we be pushed to the limit and pushed to a level where we just lose it? We lose control. We lose ourselves because we can't handle it. So we start to mishandle it. We don't know what to say. So we just start spouting off and saying anything. Just talking outside of our mouths and outside of ourselves. And, and not talking the will of God. And not believing in the power of God. Not believing God to be the God of the turnaround. The God of deliverance. The God of healing. No matter how far my back has been pushed up against the wall. Where will I go? But to the Lord. Who shall I seek? But the Lord. I'll seek your face. I'll cry out to you Lord God. I'm not giving up as Pastor Hatcher says. I'm not going to throw in the towel. This too is going to pass. Listen I'm looking for a change. I'm looking for a turning. I'm looking for God to work on my behalf. God's been too good to me. God's been too great in my life. Hallelujah. This is. This is the will of Christ Jesus. I heard my pastor say that the other day. I'm borrowing it just for a moment. But in everything, give thanks. In everything. No, it don't feel good. No, it don't taste good. No, I, I don't know how to handle this. No, emotionally, I feel like I'm just about to lose it. But God said, step back and step up. Step back and look up. Said this, listen, in everything, if you just begin to thank me, if you just begin to bless me, if you just begin to give me glory, if you just turn that wine into a praise, if you just begin to turn that, uh, that heartbreak into joy, I will rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, rejoice I'll get up off my seat and bless the name of the Lord I'll give him everything you know sometimes you just got to get physical with God you got to give him everything you got to release yourself unto the Lord my God in heaven sometimes we sit in our seat and we get more and more complacent we get more and more comfortable right where we are in our own troubles in our own situation but there are times when we got to shake ourselves we got to move ourselves into a new position with God into a higher position with God I will bless the Lord at all times his praises hallelujah we've all been through something we've all been through some troubles we've all been through some, some trials ask your neighbor hallelujah they can tell you I just ask your neighbor we've all been through some heartaches we've all been through some tests and trials. We've all been through disappointments, my God in heaven. Thank you, my Boshanda. We've all been through some frustrations. We've all been through moments when we didn't know how to handle what we were going through. But thanks be unto God, who is our strength, who is what we need daily. Thank you, Jesus. This king lost it. Thank you. He lost it. He lost, I'm going to go kill him myself. Hallelujah. I'm looking to him for a word. Looking to him for a breakthrough. Looking to him for a change. But sometimes we're looking at people for the wrong thing. We got to look unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. 
Sometimes we put our own burdens on somebody else. Thank you, Jesus, who are wrestling with things themselves. They don't even know how to handle their own house, let alone how to clean up yours. Thank you, Jesus. But they're working it out, trying to work it through. Here it is, Elisha, the man of God. If he had a step back for a moment and looked at the record. But now this scripture here is significant because I want to tell you here what happened to the king. I want to tell you here, sometimes we can get ourselves positioned in the wrong place. The Bible says, then he said unto, uh, uh, then he said, God do so and more also unto me, the head of Elijah, the son of Shepherd shall not stand. We go on further down. We're going to see something here that's prompting him. We're going to see something here that's talking in his ear. But Elijah said in his eye, Elijah ain't worried. Tell somebody I ain't worried. I'm not worried. But Elijah sat in his house. And look, he had the elders around him. He had security around him. He had those that would speak positive around him. That would speak peace around him. That would encourage him. They sat with him. They sat down with Elijah. Say, I got your back. I'm with you. I'm not going anywhere. I'm beside you. I've got your back. And the king sent a man. Now listen to this. A king sent a man from before him. But er, he was called a messenger that came to him. Listen who the king had with him. He had a messenger. And he said to the elders, see, Elijah said to the elders, see how the son of a murderer, God had revealed to him all things, had sent to take away my head. He knew what was coming. Look, he said, now when the messenger, when the person who comes to give me the message come to, come to shake my equilibrium, when the messenger comes, shut the door. Ah, shut him out. Hallelujah. And hold him out. Don't let him in. Hold him there. Hold him fast at the door. Don't let him step a foot on the inside. He said, because the master is coming right behind him. And listen, verse number 33 says, And while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger did. He showed up and came down unto him. Now listen what he said to Elijah. Now you know if he was saying this to Elijah, what he was saying to the king. And he said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Listen, he exposed himself. Listen, he was a man that was not after God's own heart. He was a man that was not after the man of God. It didn't mean him good. He had the nerve enough to stand at the door. He had, and the devil is like that. The devil had the nerve enough to stand at your door and talk that yak yak to you. Had the nerve enough to holler between the door. But you keep the door shut. You ain't got to open that door. You ain't got to let him in. You don't have to listen to what he has to say. Hallelujah. When the devil tells you, you ain't going to make it. The devil tells you, you ain't got what it takes. The devil tells you, all of this calamity is because of the devil. It's because of God. When the devil tries to turn your heart. Tries to persuade you. To believe that everything you're going through is God's fault. Get you to break alliance with the Lord. Get you to break allegiance with God. Get you to try to smack God in the face. Walk away from him. Rebel against God. This is all his fault. It was a messenger from H-E double double hockey stick. Watch the messages that come your way can you measure it by the truth of God is it from the Lord himself can you measure it by the word of God hallelujah got a negative report and you can tell he had been talking to the king yeah that's right go get him cut his head off yeah all of this mess that's happening now is because of Elijah all oh, because of his presence in this place let's just take him out the enemy listen had an Bishop, <laughs> I tell you, we got our eyes on you. We got our eyes on you. You better keep your eyes on him. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you what I know. 
You better keep your eyes on him. Because it, when the enemy tries to take him out, he got something. You better tell your neighbor, this man's got something. And y'all think I'm saying this to, to, to brag upon my bishop, but I'm not. I'm just saying this because it's the truth. It's the truth. Anytime you see these signs, when the enemy comes after him one time, twice, and then another time. Look, look what happened with Elijah when he sent this whole army after Elijah. And Elijah had to tell his servant, he said, oh my God, we're going to be cast down. We're going to be uh, uh, destroyed. He said, God, open up his eyes so he can see who's for us. So he can see that there's more for us than there is against him. And he opened up the servant's eyes and he looked around in the hills from which cometh my help, my help coming from the Lord. All I can see was chariots. All I can see was horses. All I can see was the angels of the Lord. All I can see was a heavenly host. All I can see was God's hand on my side. When I looked up, and it was the man of God open his eyes so he can see what I see I see a better day coming I see a better day ahead I see deliverance coming I see healing coming I see prosperity on the way I see a house full of folk just, just pouring out and running over blessings that you won't have room enough what do you see get ready Get ready. It's going to happen. Get ready. There's a breakthrough in Samaria. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to hit this point. We're going to quit about these four leopards. These four leopards. Tell you, the Bible goes immediately to them. The four leopards. After Elijah said, listen, you don't know what you're talking about. You come to take away my head. You come to try to destroy me. You think that's going to cure it all. You think that's going to uh, uh, make everything right if you take me down. But listen, I got a word for you. Elijah could have said, you need to go on back to that little shack where you came from. I mean, I ain't telling you nothing. Just watch and see. But no, the Lord said, tell him by this time. Now, this is where the part where well, I'm going to go crazy. Now, y'all can look at me go crazy. But this is the part where he told him, he said, this time tomorrow there's going to be such a plenty there's going to be listen there's going to be flour fine flour for a shekel and that shekel was 28 cents in American money it's for a shekel said so it's going to God is going to release such a blessing that you won't have to want for nothing said so everybody in the city is going to be blessed can you imagine this ain't just for us y'all this ain't just about the vessel. This is about the city. It's about the community. It's not just about us and how rich we can be. How rich we can be blessed. It's about what we can do in the community when they hear about the breakthrough in Samaria. Hallelujah. And these four lepers who one happened to be Gehazi. Y'all remember Gehazi. He was a servant of Elijah. And when he got so greedy that he went out to Naaman and, and, and hid the goods. And Elijah said, I saw you when you went out. I saw you when you hid the goods. He said, I tell you what, I got sad news for you today. He said, that leprosy that was on Naaman is going to be on you and your children. And your children. And your children's children. That same leprosy. And those four lepers was Gehazi and his three boys. Oh, his three boys. They were all lepers. Look at God. Look at God. God don't play. Tell somebody, God don't play. Y'all can talk back to each other. God don't play. He don't play. He means what he says. And he says what he means. Hallelujah. And look at these four leopards sitting there and saying, talking to each other, trying to figure things out and say, I tell you what, we come to our end. So why sit here till we die? We're not going to die like this. So we might as well go and put our hands, put ourselves in the hands of our enemy. We might as well go and and just, we can't go to the gate because they won't let us in. So we might as well go and put ourselves at the mercy of the enemy. And they got up. They talked themselves into getting up. Yeah, that means something. You better talk yourself into getting up. You better talk yourself into getting up. You better talk yourself into doing something. Don't just sit there and lay your head to the side. Don't just sit there. Put your hands in your laps. Don't just sit there. They say, oh, huh, huh. oh she's just good today. Oh, Lord. Mm-hmm. You better take this and begin to run with it. 
They got up and they did something. They said, let's go to this camp. They don't know. Listen, God will use who he will. God will use, move on who he will. The least people that you expect in the church, God will move on them. God will touch them. God will just do something in their life so they can bless everybody else around them. The least person that's sitting next to you, God will move upon them and say, I want you to do this and I want you to do that to be a blessing to the house of the Lord. They got up, they moved, they went to the, to the Syrians' arm, they went to the gate and look what happened. Nobody was there. All they found was food and spoil and, and riches. And they said, oh, my God, we're eating fat today. And they began to eat. And then they'd go to the next tent. They began to eat. But Gah- Gehazi remembered something that the man of God told him. Now, listen, you got to do right by God's people. You got to do right. You got to do it according to God's will. He said, we can't do this. We got to make sure that everybody eats. That's, what, that's our responsibility. We got to make sure that everybody eats at the vessel. We got to make sure that everybody knows about the vessel. We got to make sure that everybody knows if you come to the vessel, you're going to get richer. If you come to the vessel, I ain't talking about money in your pocket. I'm talking about what's going to happen for your soul. If you come to the vessel and listen, they began to spread that word around. And what happened? The very person that said this ain't going to happen. You have to watch carefully who's on one side and who's on the other side of you. One side was the the messenger. On the other side was his servant holding him up. You got to watch what's holding you up. You got to watch who's holding you up. You got to watch what we're leaning on. We have to lean on the truth. And when he opened his mouth, he had no respect for the man of God. We got to watch it. We got to watch it. We got to watch it. Then we have respect unto the man of God. You may not believe in him. You may not believe him. But you better have respect for him because he's a man of God. She's a woman of God. And you better watch your mouth. You better watch your mouth. Tell somebody, oops, watch your mouth. Oops, watch what you say. Oops. And he had the nerve enough to say, if this thing should be, if. Watch those ifs. Watch those ifs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God, it never should be an if with God. It's always yea or nay. He's going to do it or he's not going to do it. But it ain't no, no questioning his ability. He can do it. He can do it. And if he opened up the windows of heaven, might this thing be his head? Tell you what, you'll see it, but you'll never eat of it. You'll never partake of it. And when that time came, let's number say this last part. And we're done because it's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. The army was all in place. The enemy had surrounded Samaria and there came a sound. There came a sound from heaven. Listen, when we were in, we were in, we were in September's meeting, the preachers that Bishop allowed to come and stand before us, every last one of them talked about a sound. They talked about a sound. You better get this. You better get this. There is a sound that's going off in the heavens. We can't see it and we can't hear it. We just got to know it's happening. There is a sound. Listen, God let loose a sound of a mighty army that was coming in upon th- that, that enemy of in Samaria. They, they heard it. They turned around to each other and said, did you hear that? Did you hear that? I hear the sound of horses. I hear the sounds of chariots. And it got so fierce and it got so intense until they didn't take the time to take the horses to saddle up. They didn't take the time to get their provisions. They didn't take the time to get their silver or gold because that's all left for you. That was all left for you. Listen, they didn't take the time to keep to get their garments. But they said, we got to get out of here. Don't you know that's what God is doing for your enemies right now? Those of us that are going through something. Those of us that are free, Don't let me preach this hard and you just sit there. Those of us that are going through something. That are working against something. And the enemy has come after us like a flood. God has lifted up a standard up against him. And let out a sound in the heavens. Hallelujah. Let loose a sound on our behalf. Your deliverance is nigh. We can hear it. Listen. The Bible says, I'm just paraphrasing. We got to bless the Lord at all times. We got to praise him no matter what we're going through. So when they began to, 
You can't hear it, but it's happening. And that song just kept coming. Bishop used to sing it all the time. And Myron, you know, uh, uh, it's getting ready to getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. Yeah. I may not see it, but he's working out for me. If you don't put that song down in your spirit, I may not see it, but he's working it out. There's an army in heaven fighting my battles. There's an army in heaven that's working on my behalf. There's an army in heaven that's been released to set me free. There's an army in heaven that's been set out for my deliverance. I may not see it, may not hear it, but it's happening for me. Hallelujah. It's getting ready to happen. Getting ready to happen. Listen. God is getting ready to not just fill your plate. Not just fill your table. Not just fill your cabinet. God is getting ready to give you a bigger cabinet. God is getting ready to give you a greater place to put your grain and put your flour and to put your silver and to put your gold because of your faithfulness because of your your loyalty to the Lord because you believe in the word of God it's getting ready to happen it's getting ready to come to pass all those burdens you've been trying to carry by yourself all this heartache you've been trying to heal by yourself deliverance tell somebody it's getting ready to happen healing it's getting ready to happen fulfillment it's getting ready to happen joy it's getting ready to happen it's getting ready to take place and tomorrow this is the last thing i got to say because y'all working me to death thank you jesus tomorrow about this time if you put your feet into action put your hands into action Begin to praise him now. Even though you don't see it. You don't hear it. It's getting ready to happen. Because the man of God said it. He said, how many times have Bishop said, it ain't going to always be like that? It ain't going to always be like this. It's getting ready to happen. Your release. Your deliverance. Your healing. Get ready to happen! 24 hours! You got time to praise him!
shekel, 28 cents. Said, everybody, get something in your hand. If you want a blessing from the Lord, God's releasing it. God is, re you're not paying for your blessing, but you're showing God how much you appreciate. God, I take this sacrifice, bring a sacrifice to the altar. Listen, I had mine ready. I had mine ready. $28, $28, bring a I'm telling you right now, 24 hours, 24 hours, watch and see what God's gonna do. You want this bread, you want this fine flour, you want it, here it is. Just give God an offering. Give him an offering. Give him an offering. Cause it's getting ready to happen. You believe it? Give him an offering. It's getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. Your sacrifice. I sacrifice for this. just before dawn and if you can just praise him in your darkest hour you can just praise him to the break of dawn you're gonna see it happen you're gonna see it happen don't stop this praise don't stop it when you get in your car holler 